I did literature in this city in a, in a big college so close by in Nungambakam. And uh, I studied literature so that I don't have to ever give PowerPoint presentation ever in my life. <laughs> uh, I was raised uh, in, uh, in Chennai. I, uh, I grew up in Kodambakam. I was diagnosed with having a penis, which meant I had to study for engineering entrance exams. Uh, uh, all my friends who were diagnosed with the same condition were studying for the same entrance exam. Uh, but I only wanted to write poems which rhymed. I just wanted to read. Uh, but anyway, what, whatever it was, I was, uh, I didn't have friends. I spent uh, my days uh, as a boy, uh, days and weeks by myself. In fact, uh, so many days by myself that I thought one of those days a halo would appear behind me and I will figure out the meaning of life. Um, so that was more or less uh, how I grew up. In fact, it was so bad that I wanted the government to appoint my friends uh, and make it uh, illegal for people to ignore me. Uh, the way my life unfolded, I, th I think the government was involved in the friendship department. I do concede that maybe something was wrong with me, uh, or maybe uh, I was born in an age where it was just easy for people to just fly away. You just like someone and the next day his father is transferred and they vanished. Or maybe I just overestimated the importance of being solitary as an artist, as a person who wanted uh, to be a writer. Uh, or maybe, uh, just maybe I'm just saying a guess, maybe I had high standards for friends. Maybe the secret to a very rich social life is to have low standards for friends. Uh, and it's a secret uh, everybody knew, but nobody told me. I know, uh, how, do you sometimes feel that there is something everybody knows uh, about life and nobody is telling you? I feel, I feel that way all the time. I did have some friends. I've been, I, I am qualified to talk about friends, by the way, because I've grown up seeing other people have them and I also had a few. Uh, and when I was an adolescent, uh, I observed that they were all, of, they were all very different, different heights, uh, different shapes, different castes, different cl classes, different languages. I, 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 when I became an adult, it was all the same, the same kind of people, same shapes, same height, same class. But when I was an adolescent in uh, Chennai, they were all different. The only thing common was that they were all, they, they, they kept insulting each other, at least the boys. That's, so I thought, oh, friends, friends are people who insult each other. Though sometimes I wondered, first I want to understand, are you guys friends or foes? Do you like each other or do you hate each other? I never got that. And there's this phenomenon between friends which was best expressed or confessed to by the writer Gore Vidal. Something in me dies when a friend does well. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed that you got this joke? <laughs> what does it say about you? <laughs> I've seen that look of something dying uh, in a man many times as I grew up. In fact, sometimes I would be worried that I've not succeeded enough uh, if I don't see that look on a friend's, in, in a friend's eyes. You know, it's always reassuring that slight look of death. <laughs> um, you know, uh, except for friends, every other relationship is very clearly defined. Uh, parents, of course, we know that, I mean, they are legally entitled to screw you up. Uh, and uh, in Chennai, the I mean, Chennai parents are the ambassadors of entrance type, I mean, objective type entrance exams. Without, without parents in Chennai, I don't think that concept only will exist. And we know spouse is the primary suspect in the unnatural death of the other spouse. <laughs> uh, and siblings, we know, are, uh, are rivals for limited resources. Though that sounds like married people who have been married for 15 years or above. Siblings, that's what I, mean, I know. Uh, so every other relationship is well defined. Uh, and, and all these deep relationships, people still claim when they want to elevate the relationship, they say, but we are friends. <laughs> like it's this deep relationship is not enough. They have to say we are friends. Like fathers, 
like who want to be modern and who also want to say they are very, the relationship with the son is deep. They say, uh, but we are friends and he will give the guy a condom. It's like, that consecrates the friendship between the father and the son. <laughs> well, it's like the son, no, the son doesn't have a girl probably, but he gets a condom with the father. It's like in Tamil Nadu, they give the pot and not the water. <laughs> so, that's exactly what the son was like. Meet my father, and he's also a condom vending machine once a year. <laughs> and of course, mothers claim that they are friends of the daughters when they are actually, when they want to say that we quietly sneak into the email account of my daughter and checking on what she's doing. Uh, and of course, everybody, all relationships, you know what I'm talking about, they all claim that they are friends. But what do, the, what do people mean, though, when they say that they are friends? Uh, according to my own anthropological notes, I think what makes sense is that actually people are saying we are not genetically related to each other. I think that could be a de definition of friends which makes sense to me. Or we are not sexually uh, related to each other. Actually, I feel that uh, f friendship is probably a low stakes relationship where there, where there is no expectation from the other. So uh, it seems rich and everybody has a good time. Uh, maybe uh, that's, that's probably a definition of friends because only, I think, no matter what spouses say, no matter what fathers say, I think only friends are friends. Despite my deepest childhood hope, uh, it is the only relationship that the government does not define. Friends, this relationship, uh, I believe, uh, has become the most powerful relationship in the world today. Uh, definitely, it's highly monetized, uh, but it is also, people don't realize, I think, how influential this relationship is today. Uh, with the invention of social media, you can sit in one place and filter out human beings. Uh, it's like, I don't want this, I don't want this, and this is, we, we, we want diversity from plants, but not in our own friend circle. We want uh, what we are comfortable with. Uh, and we can, it's so easy to filter out people and stick to very similar types. As to what binds us all together, I think we have very intelligent answers. We have very flattering answers. Uh, but I think something else is going on. I think the most underreported cause for binding of friends is weakness, human weaknesses. You have, a, you have a wound, you have a grouse, you have a past, or you're one of those angry majority types, you know, who's very angry, or you're frothing in your mouth. You want other people who are also frothing in the mouth. So uh, maybe that is what brings people together, which I find uh, very fascinating because we as human beings, we are collectors. We collect our own. Uh, which takes us to the central quality of friendship. Friendship is political. That's what it is. And modern friendship, more so. In the heart of this friendship is you. You are the superstar of this modern, powerful relationship. And that's why it works. And that's what Facebook knows. There was a time when to be famous, you had to do something. And two, you have to do something very well. And three, you have to do something which a lot of people have come to know about. But I think now there is a thematic shift to fame itself. Today, you can be famous to 20 people. I think you can be on Facebook. You just post a comment uh, or you post your infant's photograph. You become a celebrity. Or just say that your parent died. That gets a lot of attention for some reason these days. So you become a celebrity and you have filtered humanity in such a way that nobody is going to tell you your infants are ugly and your poems are crap. Uh, that is, if you've filtered out people like me and you have done uh, your job as uh, an individual who wants very comforting friends. But what does this friendship cause? I think, it, uh, I think modern friendship is uh, changing the world, transforming the world in very profound ways. For instance, uh, friendship is a corroboration of biases. 
and opinions and views. Let's say you believe in something. Uh, let's say you believe that cow dung can block nuclear radiation. I mean, some people believe that, by the way. There are, there are PhD scholars who have said it, and there are people who want to believe that. Or you believe uh, uh, there have been alien spotting, uh, and it doesn't occur to you why aliens are spotted only in first world countries. Why doesn't anybody in Africa ever spot a UFO? I have no idea. I think aliens are very uh, economically biased towards uh, advanced economies. Uh, they, don't go, they don't go to Uganda and all that. Uh, but you believe that, let's say. Uh, or you want to believe uh, India is a Hindu country, or you want to believe India is a secular country, whatever that means, or you want to believe Christ is the true Lord. Whatever be your belief, you'll get a corroboration from someone else. That's your friend. And that's very influential. And the friend believes in this because you believe in it. So you keep corroborating each other. Uh, so we've all become a bit of that. You know, but, but, we get, but we get confirmation. We get uh, confirmation about our beliefs from other people. And there's something about uh, people we think are sane. Like most people look, I mean, most of you look sane. I don't know you at all, actually. Uh, and there's something about people with um, a corporate job and two children, exactly two children. They look very normal and respectable. And when they uh, support your views, when they have a view, you feel that that, so your view must be true. You get that corroboration. There's something about absolute truth. Forget absolute truth, absolute facts. Fact, I'm a journalist too. Facts always need journalism to travel through. You know, human head is a bit thick, thicker than we think. Uh, facts don't travel very fast. Uh, facts needs journalism and uh, historical anchors to travel. When facts are not part of news, they don't travel from one head to another head. What travels is bullshit. <laughs> bullshit travels at the speed of light. <laughs> and so the transmission of... The transmission of, uh, of, uh, of bullshit, which can euphemistically call dilution, uh, is possible only through the network of friends, normal looking people with, uh, who, who are always having good time, you know, uh, they uh, transmit your ideas very well. Uh, now, the thing is, earlier, if you're not a journalist, you're not a public figure, you're not a politician, nobody knew your opinion. You know, think of your smart grandmother. She had a lot of opinions, ask your mom. But you never knew, you know, nobody knew, the society didn't know. Uh, but now, because of social media, everybody knows your opinion. You don't have to be anybody. Now, you've already succumbed to the delusion. You've, you've made your views public. Now you can't go back. So that is another problem now. Earlier, you had a view, then you read something. They got information, then you could change your view. But now, uh, it would be very dangerous for your social life to go back on some of the views that you held just because you read some right, good, decent stuff. So in that sense, most of journalism today has become meaningless because you can't change anything anymore, I feel. You can't change anything anymore. People are said they've committed. They're committed. Uh, because, com they're committed with friends as evidence. Very powerful bond. One of the factors which, uh, which get people so into friendship is uh, there was a time not, far, uh, not, not, uh, not long ago when it was extremely difficult to get compliments. Uh, you had to again be very good at something, then you'll get a compliment. But today, you just make a post. It's very easy. People will say oh, on, on, the, on the social media, well said, uh, brilliant, uh, beautiful. You just have to post your photograph and you know that someone is going to say beautiful. If I post my photograph, trust me, I'll, I'll, there'll be at least one person will say beautiful. And this very common compliment uh, of this age, very common compliment, genius. Everybody's genius, you know. Actually, what people are doing is, people are complimenting themselves because they chose you because you're like them. And your view is exactly their view. So they're saying brilliant, well said, <laughs> genius. It's the same thing, you know. Uh, uh, but we need, we need to take them seriously because it's so pleasant to get those compliments. 
uh, and we also uh, deliver a lot of our own. And as a result, what has happened is young people today, they are insufferable because they are so full of confidence. Uh, and like in my profession, I see a lot of young writers because every week they've heard that they are geniuses. They are so, they, I mean, they have no idea how bad the copy is. They are full of confidence. Confidence is good. Writing is a confidence craft. I, I, I feel that yeah, you, 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 don't, you, don't, you should not think you are God when you are writing. You are God. But maybe that looks good when you are 50, 60, you know, not when you are 18 and you have just, okay, oh, I might be a genius. Um, so uh, they, uh, they are very confident until they submit the debut novel to the publisher and they get a rejection. Because when people have to pay money, they are very old fashioned. So that's when they realize, oh, maybe there is a mismatch between what I hear about myself and, and the way the real world is reacting. Lastly, I mean, all this aside, there is this question now. In this golden age of friendship, uh, why are we still lonely? Uh, I think it's a reasonable question. We feel that if we are in a crowd of uh, people who are always complimenting us, we, we should not feel so lonely. But I think that's almost like saying that if you have fat, uh, you, you should never feel hungry, you know, it's almost as ludicrous. Um, I think this is the golden age of friendship, precisely because we are lonely, and I think we are lonely because to, uh, to belong, we are, it is very complicated to belong. We need to uh, uh, belong and we need to own people emotionally, uh, and through other terrifying means. But in this age where everybody wants to be free, how do you own someone and how do you belong to someone? I think uh, that is the question of loneliness and I think of quite doomed. I think we'll get more and more lonely as we progress, as we become more free as individuals. Maybe that is the definition of friends. Uh, friends are people we probably love, but who we cannot own. Uh, so they will enjoy them, but they will never solve our loneliness. Thank you so much.